Hey everybody, now for something completely different. We finally got a pop-up camper. I've been researching these things for nine months, multiple dealerships. We decided on a Rockwood High Wall 276. Uh, it's got a lot of features. As you can see, it's a bit of a monster for a pop-up camper. We have never set this up before. We just brought it home a couple days ago from the dealership and we've not really even broken into it except you know throw a couple stuff in the cubbies so let's set it up it's going to be fun it might be some frustration but hey it's an adventure right let's go do the uh the latches <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so there's one. Why is this one not? Oh. There we go. We'll go around and get the other two. Has a full spare, the hard cover. And this is how it's supposed to be nice and easy, like that. They do have a little uh, slot if you want to do a, uh, a, a padlock on the other side. All right, so we got all four latches done. I'm going to go back around the other way just to idiot check, because this is something you don't want to miss. Now we've already pretty much leveled it front and back. It does have a uh, uh, electric system to raise the roof, and it's right here. It's called a power winch, just an up-down toggle. And uh, if you think of Dumber and Dumber, the most annoying sound in the world. And if you look right here, this is your uh, your indicator for being fully raised. You want to go up till it's it's taut, but of course not overstretched. And there we go. It's that easy. And this has a big entry handle. This is a new door system. for 2019s and up, and you'll excuse me, all the locks are still pretty stiff, and it has these uh, up, updated steps, and then we can adjust these down here to uh, give it more stability, and this gives a lot of left and right stability, so, and then this unlatches off, that simple. We'll throw it in some place when we're done. Okay. So when the dealer packed this up, he put the poles in here under the uh, under the slide out. When we're done, we're going to put them up under the bunk so they're right there. They're not running around bumping in the stuff. There are two sets of bed end poles. The ones with the white tip go in the front, and we may have to pull the car forward. Come over here. There's a little slot up here on the top. Got this part here. Goes into just like that. And then this hooks in here and there's three slots to pick. Uh, if you need to, to raise or lower one side of the bed. We'll just go with the middle ones first. that one. There should be a little handle here. And just 
pull it out like that, and we'll do the other end. I see a little black knob floating around in there on the floor. I'm not sure what that is. So as you can see, these have the black tips that go in the back. four slots in the back instead of three like the front. So I'll just go second from the bottom. We can always tweak it if need be. And I think somebody that's maybe shorter could maybe even start pushing these out from the inside. Not that bad. Alright. So we got that. Then it comes down to hooking up the canvas. So I was really impressed the first time we looked at these, just how heavy and thick this canvas is. We've not yet even taken off the uh, the uh, plastic on the mattresses, so okay. this has a nice little corner that wraps around this way. A little button under here that snaps in. And there's Velcro under here. Snaps it up. Around to the other side. You can see there's a little button right here. And if you see under here, there's Velcro. And then this all folds down around that. I was uh, looking at one of these on a sales lot in a pouring rain, and I was in there for about a half an hour, and it stayed completely dry, so I'm not worried about that. And then there's a little cord. Now this goes across, I, I don't know, maybe for in case it's really windy or something. Hook it over here. When we're all done, I'll come back and recheck all the Velcro to make sure everything's good. And we'll go back and do the front. So, again, you got your corner pocket here. Fits around nice and tight, and that keeps everything out. Now we tent camp some, and we decided we want to go to a pop-up. And uh, at this price point, you could get a small travel trailer bunkhouse, uh, but to me they are just too confining. I spent six years in the submarine service, I didn't want to live like that on a weekend. And we didn't want a bigger travel trailer, um, I didn't want an, an, an apartment in the woods. We have a comfortable home. I don't want the kids inside on electronics all the time. And I gotta tell you, I hated taking down the tent. It took us two hours to break down our big tent and all the cops and stuff. But I like setting it up. So I don't know if it's something primal about building your shelter in the woods or something. I don't mind the setup. Now when we go home in a couple days, we'll see about the teardown. Maybe I'll have a different opinion. Just got your little button here. Hook your Velcro up, and of course the cord's on the opposite side. down the rain flap. Okay, and 
and these are the lifter posts. There are two uh, safety posts that go on opposing corners, if I can find them in here. the other bed so let's go do pull out the slide it looks like to me we might have to raise this up one because it kind of looks like it's a little low so that won't be too big of a deal this is the dinette slide uh, with these locks you just lift and turn it should pull right out Same thing with Velcro. There are two pins here somewhere. I'm not seeing one there, so we'll look for that later. But basically, just Velcro this down. Currently attached here again. Yeah, there's supposed to be a, supposed to be a little powder pin right here that I think is attached in here. I'll look for it when we go inside. If it's not there, not a big deal. It's just any powder pin will do. But that makes sure the slide doesn't slide back in. And my theory is to start out here and then work towards the actual body of the coach. This is 14 foot box. Uh, the other high wall that Rockwood slash Flagstaff makes is the same thing, just different uh, interior decor and different decals on the outside in different model numbers. But uh, there's another 14 foot box. And it's the one that has a, uh, on the other side, it has a slide out kitchen. It has a two burner stove and a sink. Um, so that's kind of cool, but I thought that was kind of redundant because uh, you got all the cook, cook stuff inside. We have a, uh, you know, camp stove that we can use if we want to cook outside. And this one just come out like this. So I'm going to go back around and get the lifter post. So that's a lesson learned. You put everything under the front bunk mattress so you can get to it easier. Things just sit on there like that on opposing corners, so I'm going to go put it on the other corner. So, you put them on opposing corners just in case there's a failure of the lift system, these will lock it from coming down. Now these are zippered inside, and uh, I've read where you should unzip them when you close it up, but you never want to unzip it completely, and supposedly it allows the canvas to collapse a little bit better, because it can be a challenge, I guess, to tuck everything in. And then these, I think, are, uh, of course, extra rain protection. But they also uh, protect the, uh, the lifter post. I suppose you could unzip it and get that top flap from the inside if you had to. The being vertically challenged, I planned ahead. do all four of those.
the uh, other model that's out there is a 16 foot box and it is huge and it's very nice it has a little short couch on the on this end and we have a elk shaped couch in here but it has more storage but uh, add another two feet to this another couple hundred pounds and uh, I don't know I thought that'd be a little unwieldy we were hoping that uh, we could actually store this in our garage or at least in the driveway for a couple days at a time. But uh, uh, our driveway has about a 20, 25 degree upslope and uh, she bottomed out back here. Fortunately, there's uh, these things here, this little triangle thing here that guards against that. Keeps you back out. While we're here, this is your uh, black tank discharge black tank hose and a gray tank. Nobody knows why they didn't connect the gray tank to the black discharge so you can flush your gray, your black hose, but uh, we'll make it work. For our weekend camping trips like this, we probably, uh, we'll probably use water in the gray tank. I don't see us using the bat the toilet. I mean, the bathhouse 50 yards from here. And we're gonna have a porta potty uh, for the midnight trips that we can just dump uh, at our own convenience. I don't wanna mess with black tank and hose for a two-day camping trip. So you hold this through. Like I said, I'll come back when, when we're done, uh, just tightening everything up a little bit. Uh, stabilizer jacks. Where do we put the stabilizer jack? Let's go over here. So I've already put this one down here. This is the manual way, but I saw this in somebody else's video. I'll show you the difference in speed here. It's not too bad. Not any worse than cranking the tongue. My understanding is that you do not use these to level the camper. It just adds front and back, left and right stability. So you just want to get it down on the ground. That. And we'll go around to the other two with the drill. So that didn't take as long as I thought it would. That's even better, right? Plus, any, any excuse to use a power tool. Voila, so I'll put stabilizer jacks again. That's pretty much it for the outside setup. So uh, let's do the power cord and get some lights on on the inside. There's a uh, catch latches here. Uh, the door on the other side actually has a magnetic latch, and I think the 2020s have a magnetic latch. Like I said, this is the 276 model. If uh, if you like it, it's my understanding they won't be making these past this year. This is 2019. So uh, if you like this model, you might want to go searching and get one. All right, so this is our electrical box here. And uh, if you look here, your city water connection, we'll probably hook up water. So that'll be a, a hose. This is an outdoor shower, hot and cold, with a wand. 
this is, I forgot to do this, as many times as I told myself, this goes in the air conditioner plug up there. I don't think we're going to need air conditioning, but uh, that's where the step ladder comes in, right? And if you don't have a step ladder, you can undo this, unzip it, put the cord here, go inside and reach it. So it's not a huge thing. But I find it funny because I told myself three times when I was thinking about making this video not to forget the, the AC cord. So this, uh, if you want to come over here, this has, this is the plug-in. It has a nice little LED light that tells you that you've got power coming in. Way. Yep. This screws in, so I'm going to turn the breaker on here and see what happens. There we go. So there's your blue light to indicate. This is your hot water heater. Um, another thing I need to check before we uh, turn the water in is the uh, the tech at the shop when he walked us through he pulled the anode oh, excuse me <laughs> okay go on happy allergy season by the way it may may be a merry one uh he uh, opened this up pulled the anode out and that lets the hot water tank drain uh that's his suggestion as a uh, service tech because he said that uh if you just leave the water sitting in your hot water tank it's going to get mildewy smelling and uh we're, we're for right now going to be you know weekend campers here and there, so we'll probably do that every time. I did get the anode rod back in, but I, I, I want to make sure it's tight before I turn the water on so we won't worry about that. Let's go inside. Okay, so this is the knob I saw laying on the floor. Not sure where that goes. I'm sure it'll we'll figure it out. So the uh, heater's right here. This is a Bluetooth radio. Uh, let's turn on the floor lights and the ceiling lights. So you can see we got these floor lights here. Um, those come on when you want them to to uh, take care of uh, you know night light type of stuff. This is a pretty nice uh, radio. Bluetooth has an HD HDMI USB charger. Uh, we do have two indoor speakers here and the big black knob right there. That is an outdoor speaker, so you can check and see if your neighbors like Five Finger Death Punch. All right, so come on in. So we'll do the bed ends first. Uh, these curtains, like I said, sometimes you get these. Our, our dealer did have them set up. And I'm going to put all the rods. Where do you put the rods? You okay, put them all right here. So... Once again, it just makes more sense to put the rods under the, the corresponding mattress because I'm sitting here guessing now which rod is which. The two longest ones are for the beds. So the one here, this is the longest bed because the front is a uh, king size bed and the back is a queen size. So it just goes in this little knobby thing here. This is the bow down here. If I can get to it. Alright. So I think we want to come in this way. You'll see what this uh, net thing is here in a second. I want to hook it up. that out and you gotta hook it in up here. There we go. Problem is nothing up here to hold on to. Slide all the way out. 
we'll expect that to get easier after a couple times. Now, there's also little latches here on the bed end. Might have been smart to uh, do that first. Make sure the bed was pushed all the way out. I think older models has this out here. This is a little hanging clothes rack that drops down somehow. The ceiling in this is really high, which I kind of like. They have to do stuff like this. There we go. So that folds down. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me to have this hanging clothes rack right by this. But this comes down too. Now I'm thinking, uh, they left these up, but I'm thinking when we tear down, we'll take those down. It'd probably be pretty convenient to have them in the house, load up everything, and just throw them out, take them back out of the truck, and then hang them up. And this is like a same thing, same idea, but a pantry. So we'll do the other bed in. This time, I'll make sure the bed's all the way up. There we go. And same thing, it's going to be really tight. Problem is, you need the step ladder. Yes, please. I'll go get it. Okay. So one thing that just occurred to me that now that we have uh, battery power, uh, maybe smart to turn on the fridge because apparently these take a while to, to cool down. So I'm just going to turn it up, turn it on. It's on AC. It will run off battery, propane, and shore power. Oh, that needs to be secured a little bit more, you think? Huh? Does that need to be secured? There you go. So these, uh, these pull up. That, there's a little, uh, pocket down there, too. These come with heated mattresses. Uh, you plug it in on one end of the mattress, and you plug it in here. Because, of course, there's nothing underneath it out there. So on a cold night, it could be cold in here. Um, we'll do this one, then. As I remember at the dealership, this one was really a challenge to get in. Even the, the, the tech had problems with it. Uh, maybe not. So here's that. And this curtain pulls all the way across to make kind of a private changing room or if the parents wanted to sleep back here you could pull it across. This goes inside the hard wall bath, uh, bathroom and uh, I think probably during the day since we're going to use the bathhouse we'll leave this down but we'll set it up for the video. So first you just raise this side up. 
kind of slides in a little bit. And you hook it right there. And you carefully lift this one. You don't want to do that though. And this one pulls out a little bit. So then, you put the door on. If you want to show them the bathroom real quick. So you do have the curtain around, that, that curtain pulls down. Um, but it's got a, a flush toilet, it's got the shower wand. And uh, we're going to see if we can't squeeze a porta potty in there. At least we'll store it in there. And the door, which has to be stored here, it has this little lip down here. And it just slides on right there. I think you want to make sure you got it up against this bumper. And then up here at the top, there's a couple little notches. You just wiggle it in on both sides and there you go. You got a pretty good bathroom. And you can see there's a bit of a gap in there, but you'd have to work to see through. You can see in there. So <clears throat> then we'll set up the table. And just give you an idea how big uh, this is for sleeping space. I'm five foot eight. So I could sleep here. You could you could do two adults here. There's no queen bed, but that was one of our other requirements is that we could sleep a, a fifth person, if you will. Now the uh, version with the the kitchen slide out and the 16 foot big box. Both had the U-shaped dinette. I love the look of the U-shaped dinette, but uh, you don't. The table's about half the size, so you don't get a lot of table room with it. And we'll show you this in a minute. And they're the same size as far as inches go. It's a pedestal table in the other two. The nice thing about this one is you can cheat it one way or another. Uh, you can take this outside if you needed additional outside. Oh, found where that other knob went. Right there. Something must be stripped out or something. We'll worry about that later, of course. And voila, same seating surface, the wobbly table. We really like the, uh, the the countertops in here. They're kind of a light, marbly look. They almost have a texture to them. And uh, so here you got three burner cooktop. This becomes your uh, backsplash. Got an oven. It's electronic spark. I don't have the gas crank on. Four foot cubic refrigerator with a small freezer pocket. Much outlet. These drawers are good, but they're they're really tiny. They're really shallow. And this is extra lighting. It hooks up here. adds a lot of light, doesn't it? So you got lighting there, and then uh, complete storage under both of these. I'll show you this one. And just more goodies. These are the bunk fans. These are kind of nice. And then I'll show you down here. So it's the same idea. Plug it in. Got a fan. Two speeds and a light. So you can hang it like this, you can hang it like this. So that's how you get fan and lighting in there. 
So you can see that that adds a lot of light, good night light. Um, there's cabinet here, which is pretty good. Goes almost the whole depth. There's another storage cabinet here. Same thing. You got these drawers. And uh, the nice big cabinet here. Now this is the one that accesses to the outside. Microwave. These drawers are bigger than the ones in the kitchen. You know, you can put all your uh, bug sprays and games and stuff in there. Electrical outlet, cable outlet. If you want to set a TV here, pretty much everybody could sit and watch. There is storage under here. This is accessible from outside. This is the stereo speaker, stereo speaker. Another uh, GFI protected outlet. This is your fuse and breaker panel. This is your uh, LP sensor. This is your, I believe that's your uh, water, that's your water heater. So, and then on the, down here, almost done. Here's your heater down here. This uh, also has a uh, uh, battery sensor, gray tank sensor, black tank sensor. It has a 12 gallon gray tank, 12 gallon black tank, and a 20 gallon uh, fresh water holding tank if you're dry camping. It, it is solar equipped. It has the Creative Breeze fan. Uh, these are the, the higher end fans that can uh, pull a 10 mile breeze through here. If you uh, crank it open and turn it on, and that will run off your battery pretty conveniently uh, and uh, ecologically. So now, the door. This is the part that uh, I think is going to be the most challenging, actually. But we'll see. So you loosen this up. It's really supposed to be a one-man job, but you got to be kind of a tallish man. So you just undo these snaps. It's got these guide wires up here, so you don't have to hold on to it. So you unlatch it from up here, and you just kind of back it out. You want to stand about the middle of the door, kind of get it outside, I believe. out of the way. There we go. As it does it, you do have Velcro for the inside, the outside. You get all this out of the way. the problem. That's been teased out. It did go down a lot easier at the dealership, so maybe this happened when they packed it up or maybe I just did it. There we 
There we go. That's just a little brush on the bottom. Here. That's more like it. And you do have to kind of futz with the... And you put the Velcro on the inside. Oh, you should hold it up here. So like I said, that was, to me, that was the most challenging part of the whole setup. It's still not bad. I'll do the Velcro on the outside. Excuse me. Screen door up, screen door down. And this is a little cable. It goes there. And the grill. This here, this is your radio antenna, this is your city water. This nice little bug light. Can't tell that it's on, there we go. Um, it supposedly doesn't let bugs be attracted to the door coming in and out. So that's pretty much it, that's the high wall. 276 by Rockwood. Um, first time setup, I've never done this before. And uh, I appreciated all the other videos I've seen out there about people setting up pop-ups. So I thought I'd maybe pay it forward. You get to watch my rookie mistakes. And uh, I had fun. Um, of course, please like, share, subscribe. And uh, happy camping. Thanks.